Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms 5. Today we're the Locust Solus Black Box, and uh, we're taking on the final dungeon. Now, this dungeon is long, but it's divided itself up nicely into three distinct parts, so, eh, I'll take advantage of that, and uh, I'll do three distinct parts as well. So we have our first puzzle right here, and what you have to do, it's a pain, I hate the targeting system in this game, it's such a pain in the ass. Um, you have to freeze three of these boxes, it really doesn't matter which three that you freeze, and then whichever one you didn't freeze, you blow up. And what that's going to do is going to make it so that the other ones unfreeze, and then you can pull and push these uh, boxes on top of these switches down over here. Here we go. So last time, we thought that we were going to take on Volsung, but uh, we ended up taking on his clone instead, which was rather odd. And it seems that Volsung's just hanging around in here and just waiting for us at the top of this tower because, you know, all good villains are at the top of these towers. Um, but, you know, they're never just where you can easily get to them, God forbid. Ugh, God, like, I don't know what it is about, maybe, maybe it's the positioning or something, but it's really a pain to, like, push and pull these objects. Uh, how am I gonna get this one down? You know what I have to do? Okay, so push this one over here, then push it down. Okay, then pull this over. There we go, and then pull that one up. Yeah, this is kind of annoying, but uh, it's not that bad. Pull it up, Dean, my god. I'm all damn data weight on you. Okay, so keep on moving and grooving right along. Inside these cells, there are some treasures that you can grab. I really don't care about them. Like the lucky card. We're all at level 100. What the hell does it matter? And then we're also going to get, like, yellow card and stuff. And, again, like, we don't even need gold. But speaking of gold, there was a shop box outside um, that you could have bought stuff at if you really cared. I didn't, so I didn't really feel like it. And, again, since we're already at level 100 and uh, we don't need any experience points, why bother fighting the monsters? I'm just going to run from all of them. Anyway, use the power shot and move right along. Those amethysts that we got, they're a, uh, I can't pronounce anything today. They're a key that we need to use to get further along in the dungeon. So if you don't get anything in here, at least get the amethysts. Because you have to get those. Oh, look at that. Well, the door closed, but this thing kind of um, opened. So what you have to do is stand over here uh, behind the grating, then blow up that box. Then you can move on. And uh, move and groove right on up through here. We have some pots over here that can blow up. Let's uh, do that real quick. But there's nothing to be had in there. Sorry about that. We have a scene coming up, and I actually have to adjust my video settings and make it worse and more grainy because there's going to be a little flashback scene in here. And um, if I didn't change my settings, it would actually make it... Um, freeze so yeah um i don't know what's going on with the emulator in this particular scene that's going to be happening here but if you're having any problems on your side just change the video settings i change it from i think it's 3d11 hardware i change it to 3d11 software and it will fix any sort of flashback issues that you happen to have oh yeah probably you probably got the uh the worst of both worlds Oh, poor guy. Well, let's just find out what happened with him. We saw this flashback quite some time ago. There was some sort of, like, black cloud or something that, like, infiltrated Volsung's mind. So, I'm sure that we're going to get more background on this right here. Oh. Oh, he's torn. This reminds me so much of Terra when she was, you know, half human, half Esper, and the, um, you know, the problems that she went through. It might have been nice if Volsung was our hero. That would be an interesting game. If um, if this game was like, kind of redone by the Wild Arms team, 
in. Maybe maybe if they did like an HD upgrade or something, and then they put on some sort of after story where you could control Volsung and do like a whole like chapter. I'm not saying like a whole game, but you know, like a little five to ten hour chapter um, of a Volsung story and maybe play as him. That would be really interesting. Ah, yikes! Oh shit! I wonder what exactly this is that's possessing him. Is this just like his inner demons that have just, you know, gotten a life of their own because he's filled up with so much, you know, anger and frustration and hate? Or is this actually some sort of outside force, some sort of outside power that is taking control of him? And why is the ominous, godly voice talking about the wall between the races? Dean came up with this metaphor. This ominous, otherworldly voice has no clue about what stupid-ass Dean said. And like, and then he's using his metaphor. It doesn't make any sense. Don't you have any other way to describe the uh, the friction that exists between the races, like this little race war riot thing that we have going on, than just this wall that Dean came up with? You know, it's one thing if um, if Dean was talking to somebody and Dean happened to use the metaphor of the wall, and then you know they kind of piggybacked upon that metaphor and then they started using it as well. But for just this otherworldly weird ass voice to all of a sudden use this wall metaphor as well? It's so stupid! Ugh. That's enough of my rant for right now. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay, so the ominous voice is telling him to destroy the two races. So I guess that's where he got his idea from. Yeah, no kidding. That'd be horrible. Um, just to live and let live, I guess? You know, you could just, like, you know, live in a cabin out in the middle of nowhere or something. I mean, it's better than killing every single last person on the planet. Yeah, the one true path of killing everything and everyone. If they don't agree with you, just kill them. That's what you gotta do. That's the lesson for the kids. Hmm. I wonder if we ever do learn who that voice is. Well, it wasn't really you swearing it, it was you getting overtaken by, by, by the voice. Yeah, why do you want them here? Why don't you just kill them when you have the chance? Why don't you just fire the darkness to your onfil Gaia, destroy all humanity, like, why are you trying to get yourself killed? Anyway, speaking of killing Volsung, um, I'm sure some of you are wondering why I did the bonus dungeons before going and killing Volsung. Well, I have a couple justifications for it. Number one, it's my let's play, I'll do whatever the hell I want to. That's number one. Number two, um, no, 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 I want to kill you, there we go. Yeah, use the detector in here, and then just fire, and kill all these guys. But uh, anyway, number two, like, if you're playing this game normally, and naturally, that is whenever you would end up um, doing the bonus dungeons. It's not like you would, you know, make a separate save just to go and kill Volsung, and then after you kill him, go back to that separate save, and then be like, oh, well, now I'm going to the bonus dungeons. No, you do it in one try. Anyway, hit that with the power shot, and then opens up a door back to Area 3. And uh, we'll use that later, but for right now, let's uh, continually move on. And yeah, I am way overleveled for these guys, but I mean, if you do all the optional content, you would be too. And the game gives you so many level apples and everything else that, I mean, it's it's really hard not to be overleveled. Um, so yeah, you're probably not supposed to be where I am, but... It doesn't matter. These guys are so easy. All it does is make the bosses uh, quicker. And speaking of bosses, we got one right here. Okay, so let's see what we got here. He's weak to wind. And uh, if we go in the fire hex right over here, we can get an attack apple at the end of this fight. So I'll just hang out there. Uh, let's see. We'll stick. Yeah. 
let's have them start heading on over to the um, wind hex. And I'll have Dean totally take it over since he can just move to whatever the hex he wants to uh, so that he can't move and he can't move me from here. Now, while I'm here, let's go ahead and intrude with Dean to get some extra turns and really knock the crap out of this guy. What'll probably... Well, no. I was gonna say that what you could do is have Avril um, move towards him and start attacking him to delay his turn, but it really doesn't matter because, I mean, he's gonna be dead so soon. So you might as well just have Greg join in the fun and blast the crap out of him too because at least he can exploit the uh, weakness. And we should be able to intrude one more time and take out this guy. I probably don't even need to intrude, but I'm going to do it just in case. You know, just to make sure everything's kosher, make sure that this guy gets creamed into the ground. Well, there we go. Yeah, very simple. Even at level 70 or so, it would be fine. You get a useless we attack, do Apple. Anything, as long as we don't give up! Whatever, Dean. Um, the only thing that I really actually want in here are attack apples, but at this point, like, Dean and Avril pretty much have 999 attack power, so why bother boosting up even more? And, I mean, we killed Ragula Ragula, for God's sakes. Volsung is nowhere near as strong as him. Yeah, you think you're so great? We'll come kick your ass! How is he talking to them? Does he have just like an intercom system built into this place? Um, yeah, if you don't want to be kept waiting, why don't you come down to where we are? Uh, what are you thinking about now? Yeah, no kidding. Why don't you get up off your ass and do something, Folsom? Go to the darkness tier! Fire it at Fogea! Instead, you're just sitting there on your throne. Like, every time that we see you, you're just sitting on your ass on your throne. You must have, like, 20 thrones just scattered throughout the world where you just go there to sit on your ass all damn day. Now, I could end it here, but um, I'm going to move on. Yeah, this is a clock room, and we'll deal with this place later. But there's a couple things that we can... Well, really, one more thing that I want to get um, that's actually... Whoa! Important. I hate how that thing does that. But anyway, go over here. We can keep firing at a level apple. Not that I'm going to use it. But I'll uh, continue on our way. And we have another room where we have to use detector and then use bullets to shoot the little enemies before they... Whoa! Come and get you. Let me just be a little bit slower about that. What's nice is that at this level, you can run from everything. It's so nice. And here we are in uh, area 15. But this is really the place that I wanted to get to. And you head over to this corner, and we get the second key that we need for this dungeon. And we're going to use keys to unlock doors next time on Let's Play Wild Arms 5. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And have a good day.